A second degree deformity is one where, say, the arch is collapsed again, just to use that example, and we ask the person in question to raise their arch and they can't. So they just haven't got the muscle strength or the bones have begun to set in that position. Yet if you reach down and passively raise the arch, they then say, oh, that feels so good. If you could support me in that position, I'd be much happier. So that's a second degree deformity. Remember the first degree, they're down and you ask them to correct it and they can do it voluntarily, but so you're just correcting, the, finding and correcting the force that's making them want to come down. But a second degree is they can no longer correct it themselves, but they can be assisted to correct it. So if you look at this uh, foot uh, model, this is a foot that's uh, largely collapsed and it's pretty flat but you can see there's a lot of soft tissues of these muscles and the ligaments and plantar fascia that can take a, a lot of support and the foot can be corrected by directly replacing the muscles and tendons, which you see along here, with an exterior force pushing up from underneath. So the trick is you have to get what's called the ground reaction force. You have to get the, the ground to be able to push up under the foot where it's tending to roll in. This is an example of a manufactured orthotic for a second degree deformity. So you see it's got a built-in arch support, it's got a metatarsal pad, it's got a metatarsal bar to stop the heads of the metatarsals dropping down and a soft piece in there for where the joint needs to be allowed to drop. So a very, very well-made uh, device. And unfortunately, they've had to skive it narrow in order to get it into the shoe. So that creates a problem that when the weight comes down, there's nothing underneath the orthotic to resist the inward collapsing. So we've given it arch support, but when we put it into the boot, this is the a boot made by somebody else that was brought to us, the ground is not underneath where the foot weighs down. So um, this model of the foot, funny enough, just fits into this boot. There's the tibia. You can see how uh, medially displaced the tibia is. You can see when I push down on the tibia that the foot is rolling to the inside. And so what we've been asked to do is make this whole uh, area here wider to bring the ground up under the arch to be able to support it. You can see from the bulk of this orthotic, again I say very well made, but you know where are you going to get a shoe that's going to accommodate all of that volume and your foot as well. So then they have to have a specially made um, modular footwear to get the depth. You know, it, it could look nicer. And there's, there's ways. So if you look at this Louis heel, it's elegant and narrow, but it splays out to giving a good width at the bottom. Here's a similar Louis heel that has uh, been flared to the medial side. And in here again you'll see that there's a cushion arch support. So it's about seven mil higher there than there. So that's correcting the underlying factor that, that would be uh, the original first degree deformity. But now it's a second degree deformity. We actually have to use this cushioning under here to raise up and replace the weak muscles. So bespoke orthopedic now has a much bigger part to play because with these massive orthotics or massive amounts of arch support and the need to actually get the uh, ground reaction force underneath where the leg is coming down, you often need something very specially uh, made and very well considered, particularly if you want something that's got some degree of, of elegance about it.